Hi folks. Today we're going to take a look at the SAM chassis module in a Freightliner Cascadia. Also now known as the classic Cascadia since the introduction of the new Cascadia. So what is a SAM? Well, they're basically cab mounted ECUs. Freightliner calls it a signal detection and actuation module, or SAM. The SAM cab works closely with the SAM chassis to control much of the vehicle functionality. While the SAM chassis controls most of the chassis functions, the SAM cab controls most of the cab functions. It's a vehicle power distribution module that manages the cab electrical functions. The SAM chassis communicates with the other ECUs in the Cascadia using the CAN data bus. This ECU uses inputs such as switches, sensors, and data link messages, and drives outputs such as lights, motors, and solenoids. It powers and controls everything from exterior truck and trailer lighting to electrically controlled diff locks. It provides power to other cab mounted modules such as the ABS. Most of its outputs are logic controlled relays. They're controlled with FETs or field effect transistors. Outputs are then typically fuse protected. When they're not fused, they're monitored and turned off when they go over current. It can also broadcast fault codes when there's a problem with a number of these components or circuits. When it does this, you may see something like CHS71 on the instrument cluster display. The SAM chassis has parameters that can be viewed or changed for vehicle configuration. The SAM chassis software can be programmed using service link or diagnostic link, which will update to its same version or upgrade it if required. Reflashing the software can sometimes be a last ditch effort to fix a faulty SAM chassis if there's a chance it may have become corrupted. The SAM chassis is mounted on the driver's side of the vehicle. It's mounted on the outside of the cab but protrudes through to the inside of the firewall. In my experience, most SAM chassis failures tend to be due to water intrusion and corrosion. Exterior water intrusion can be greatly reduced by always ensuring the cover on the outside of the unit is always in place. Interior water intrusion can be reduced by following Freightliner's recommendations, making sure drip shields and wire routing is correct. It's also a good idea to add some dielectric grease to the wire connectors to repel moisture. And always try to have interior water leaks fixed, although that can sometimes be a losing battle. There's been a number of recalls and campaigns focusing on protecting cab mounted ECUs from water. It's gotten better, but it's still not perfect. One of the main issues that was addressed was updating the exterior cover to provide better sealing against moisture. Its insulation is mentioned in Bulletin 54-294. So, you've determined that your SAM chassis is faulty and needs to be replaced. Replacing one is not very difficult. Here's how you go about doing it. Begin by disconnecting power to the unit, preferably by disconnecting the batteries. I tend to start from the inside of the vehicle. First, remove the driver's side step plate. It's usually held on with three screws. This will allow you to remove the driver's side kick panel. This is the panel that holds the 9-pin diagnostic connector. You don't need to disconnect anything, just move the panel aside with the connector attached. Now move any insulation or wiring out of your way, and disconnect the five connectors on the SAM chassis. Below these connectors, there's also a large ground connection. You'll need to loosen the nut and remove this too. Now on the outside of the vehicle, disconnect all electrical connectors and the positive and negative cables at the bottom of the SAM chassis. If your truck has a manual transmission, the clutch master cylinder assembly will be in the way of removing the SAM chassis. You need to either loosen the 4T40 mounting screws enough to allow it to move out of your way, or just remove the screws entirely to move the assembly. If your truck has an automatic or automated transmission, you won't have to worry about this. Now remove the three nuts that hold the SAM chassis to the firewall and carefully remove it towards the front of the vehicle. Now before you begin installing the new one, you'll have to transfer over any fuses or relays from the old SAM chassis that are missing in the new one. Also, this next step that Freightliner recommends may be debatable. They want you to check the SAM chassis for a hole in the lower mounting flange. If there's no hole there, they want you to drill one to allow moisture to drain out. Personally, I've never done this. I see it as another point of access for moisture and corrosion, but if you decide to do it, Drill a quarter inch hole at a 45 degree angle and only to a depth of one inch, no further. Besides that, the rest of the installation is simply the reverse of the removal. Now, when a SAM chassis is replaced, it must be reprogrammed with the specific parameters for the vehicle in which it's being installed. The set of parameters in the new unit may work well enough to operate the vehicle, but the parameters and software should be updated to match the vehicle build and to match the other ECUs installed in the vehicle. Use service link or diagnostic link to download and program the parameters for the SAM chassis. 
all the ECUs on the CAN data bus must be at compatible versions of software for data communication to occur properly. When a SAM chassis is replaced, use service link or diagnostic link to determine if the SAM cab, MSF, and CGW are all communicating at compatible versions of software. So, that does it for this video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, and I'd also encourage you to support the channel on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a video, you can really help out the channel and keep these videos coming. Of course, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to be updated on when new videos are uploaded. And as always, thanks for watching.